Hello, how are you doing? I'm doing fine, thank you for asking. I was just looking at this website and I was wondering if we could recreate it using GreenShift with the query add-on and maybe add a little bit of flair. I mean, it does look good. It has a proper design, but I think we could upgrade it just a little bit. Let's use GreenShift and the query add-on and also the animation add-on. So let's get to it. If you'd like to follow along, there's a link in the description that allows you to purchase the add-on and it's a affiliate link, so I get a small commission. You need the query add-on and you need the animation add-on, so you can purchase that on the GreenShift website. They also offer some lifetime deals, which in my opinion is really a steal. So you need to purchase and download those and get them installed. Next, there will be a last link in the description down below where you can just click on it and it will fire up a testing environment in TasteWP and it doesn't cost you a thing to fire it up and will be valid for seven days. So that's fine. I would suggest to update the green shift and also the theme. And as you go to post, I use the post from Clifton WP, a very well-known cadence tutorial maker. And next, you would like to install the plugins. You can find your plugins if you have purchased it uh, before by scrolling down, pressing your account. And here are your downloads. We need to have the query and the GZIP one. Once you have downloaded the zip files, then we go back to our plugins and we add a new plugin. We upload our plugins, the GZIP, activate, and then we add the other one as well. Put a query add on and activate the plugin as well. Then you have to install your license. So you go to settings and then license manager and then paste in your license and hit activate. Now you are all good to go. Now that we have activated our license, I also like to set some other settings that makes our lives just a little bit easier using GreenShift. So let's do that next. We go into our global settings in our interface. I always like the show only element blocks. The element blocks are the blocks without any extra wrappers. So GreenShift has made it as clean as possible. I also would like to change the default value and we set to RAM and then we hit save. This makes our lives very easy. <laughs> Later in this video, you will see why. Also, I would like to create a style book already and let's dismiss this one. And then in our variables, I just press store. And what this does is restore all the variables that GreenShift actually has in here already by default. So I think there's a very nice solution. And then we hit save and uh, we're ready to go. So let's go to pages and add a new page. So now let's take a look at the website we're about to recreate. So this is the one we are trying to recreate. And I will just put them a little bit on the side. And in here, I would like to add a H1. What we can do is click the plus sign, but if possible, I like to use my keyboard only. So you can press forward slash and there we have the overview of all the things you would like to use. So press enter and this will add the block element of heading. We type in your briefing and to get another block in, you press control alt Y and there will be another block section for you. So we press forward slash again and we use metagather. And for the metagather, I would like to add side data, the date of today. And there's the date of today. Also like to the have the typography a little bit smaller. So we can use the variables that GreenShift now has added for us. And we can select the size of small. Then we add a container. So we press forward slash container. And there's the div container. And in here we will add another heading. But this time it must be a tag of h2. So we can switch that up real quick. And we says make it say stop stories. In here we add another div container and within the div container we would like to have two query loops. So we will add one and duplicate that one. And now let's set up the first query loop and the first query loop needs to have just one grid. Uh, it doesn't need any gap so we can remove that one. For the data settings we only want to fetch one because this will only show one item. And for the next one, something similar. We will also would like to have one grid column, perhaps a list. And in the data settings, we would like to have five items. So now this is a little bit set up. Now we would like to offset it a little bit because we don't need the first 
story. So in offset you press 1 and it will keep, skip the first story and just continue on the rest. So let's continue on the design now that we have everything in. So let's click on our parent container and we'll add a class. And the class will be called story and we add it as a global class. And we click on story. We can set it to only be used for this block type. That would be very nice in this case because I don't want to use this on any other block than a div container because this will be styling the div container itself. So let's add a background color and we would like to add this one. You can also pick another one if you would like to. Maybe a little bit darker one it would be fine. And then we can add a, some spacing to it also. As you can see, now the default theory is REM, which is very helpful. But in this case, we just would like to use, we can use variables. And let's add spacing in here as well. And let's go to the left side and add spacing in there as well. So now everything is nicely spaced. I see that there's a lot of spacing with the top stories. So what you can do is adjust the margin of the top and set it to zero. And now it is nicely spaced. You can also click the staircase to open up the sidebar. And then you can see your document overview, which also is a little bit handy you would like to adjust the structure um, so let's select this one again and i would like to add a border radius some presets are already available so we can just select that one and it is updated now we do have to hit save here else the class won't be saved and all your changes will be gone once you refresh i've done it a few times so that's why i, <laughs> I would like to share it with you uh, next up is the cards the inner itself we're going to change it just a, just a little bit seeing what kind of information we would like to have in there i would love to remove this one the title is okay i also would like to have the date and the user data it's fine as well so i would love to switch those around that we first have our date and then the name and then we can change the name we have in the label some post fix already available we can remove that and then the Spacing also won't be needed anymore, so we can reset the spacing. Also, the styling can be gone, so we can reset all the styling. Let's do the same thing for this one. Reset all the styling. Then for label, I would like to add round kind of thing. If you don't know where you can find this, you can always will add a link in the description. So it wasn't the last one. And if you look for ASCII circle, you will get a lot of options if you would like to. Well, let's, for instance, it has been copied and then pasted in your label. So this is a very huge one. And you can also find a very small one. Just Google it a little bit. Now for uh, the design, I would like this diff container, the, the loops itself to not have any styling furthermore. So I would love to remove, reset the spacing, but overflow hidden needs to be the same. That's always nice. And then we can reset the border. So that we don't have any styling anymore for the uh, container itself. Then for the image, I would like to change it to have a class of story. Let's make it featured because this is a featured section actually. Featured image. And we add it to a global style. Then we select it. And then we do our changes again. So we would like to have it rounded. And as you can see, there's nothing applied. This can be difficult sometimes, but if you press in the overflow hidden, it will remove the overflow. Now let's move everything outside of the diffs that are added in here. So let's grab those and grab that one as well. I remove the diff container because we don't need it. And then you can just style the title. So in here we add a story featured title and we add it as a global class now what we do forget with the story featured image is to save it and because i don't want to use it anywhere else than on images i will just save it globally only for this style block now for our title we'd like to create a title that we we like to update the title so we go to our font size greenshift added some titles for us we can just pick a size that we like and add that one in Sometimes you have to hit save or something is overwritten in the block, as you can see. So we can just hit reset options, also reset the spacing, and then we can change the sizing according to our wishes. So I think this looks good. 
and would like to remove the spacing to the top and bottom as well because we're going to do the spacing on a other section and uh, for the fonts I would love to remove the decoration so no decoration that means the underline is now gone lastly let's start those two so we can add another section we add story dash featured dash and we set it as a global class we add it we select it make it only available for the textiles and within typography we'll set the font size to very small maybe even smaller than this one yeah this looks okay and then we do the same thing for this one but because we already have it we can just reuse it so that's nice i forgot to save it if you forgot to save it you need to make it again and now we save it and it's fine i see that there's still a need of a little bit spacing between the, the date and the dot so let's add that one we go to value spacing and add some spacing on the right and we can use the default one Ooh, this is very big this is still too big this can work and now let's add some gap for those sections so we go downwards a little bit go to flexible content and here press flex uh, flex but now it's from side to side but we would like to uh, have it from top to bottom and let's add a row gap of 1 em and now it's nicely spaced so we're done and now we are finished with the first section and if you ask me it looks a little bit like this it's not done yet but eh, it, it's in there and then we add a new class column 2 we add a global class then we change the flex align to go from left to right and we add a little bit of column gap so there's a little bit of spacing breathing room between those two sections let's adjust the other query loop add-on we know that there are some settings already set so we can reset those real easy so that we have a more clean slate to work with next let's change the query add-on loop itself we forgot one thing we need to go to flex content put in flex so that goes from left to right and then let's remove some things that we don't need we don't want this one let's do that real quick let's also reset the typography in the loop and also the spacing in the loop because i just don't like the default settings and i would like to use classes to create those so we go to block add a new class story title and then we go to global classes and in here we can change these settings i also would like to only use this one for the text element so let's change the size first and uh, let's create make it small maybe a little bit bigger that looks nice and remove the underline i also would like i see that there's still some setting so let's reset the spacing for this one because i don't like it so the story title is now fine let's add this little section so we change those two up there we go and, and then we need to reset the default settings again so to value reset and to background reset and also for this one we want to remove the post label and reset any setting that is set right now and for this one we can use the same setting so probably we can re rename this because this is all for the tiny text so we can rename the class to story uh, meta or something similar and we can hit save so now the, the classes are all renamed and we can reuse it in here as well let's hit save now i see that we lost some styling so let's refresh i don't know why it suddenly loses its styling but it's back now again uh, except for this one it's, this, this one's still too big uh, but yeah let's keep it as is and let's copy the round kind of thing the circle and done and we go to our labels post fix and add that in there and we will add some value spacing again so there's a little bit of spacing there to lose fine and i would like to adjust the image so let's add a story dash image in here although i would like to use the class it doesn't work properly uh, at least for now so i reset those two the image is shown an aspect ratio of one to one and if we can and when you say reset this one to be auto then go to your story 
and then you change the width for example you want it to be five width and use an aspect ratio of one to one you can see that the image itself isn't changing and that's what i dislike so let's reset this one very quickly and go into our settings in here so we add the aspect ratio of one over one and for the size something like four five pixels that will cover it and for the border we click on this one and there has a nice border in there then we select our query loop and i would like to have some spacing between those two so let's add those spacing into the column gap and then we can set an extra small spacing that looks pretty and perhaps the spacing between those two is a little bit big between the title and the metadata data so we can uh, manually set a value instead of a var to it looks a little bit better and then we can scale down our image as well just a tiny bit 4.1 yeah that looks okay but there needs a little bit more spacing between all the items on the right hand side so let's add them real quick we want to do that in the first section so the grid settings and let's set it to something like this s maybe a little bit smaller would it also work yes that will work amazing then we hit update and let's see what we have in the front end and there we go we have our query add-on and it looks amazing if you ask me now it would be nice if we can just level up a little bit give it a little bit more spice than we have right now so let's that do that real quick with the animation add-on so let's get to it so we go back to our editor and select the first one and then we go to the add font stop there we can add animations so we enable advanced animations and let's put in just a tiny little shift from left that looks amazing and we want to start it with zero opacity so you get this effect now we can just move it just a little bit less and that looks good if you ask me and then we add an animation to this list as well. We enable animation. I would love the animations that we have in here to be a similar kind of shift. So just a tiny bit. And I want to be delayed because after this animation is done, I want this list to be to appear. So we add a tiny delay of 500 milliseconds. And if we change the values now, you can see that the whole list is moving. And I would like every item to move in individually. So we add a stagger. And as you can see, now it moves in one by one. And we put in a 0 0.1 delay. And then we add the opacity in there as well. And you get this kind of animation, which, if you ask me, looks amazing. Then we set the direction from, and everything is done. Just hit update, and let's view it on the page. And there we go. Our query are down. With the animation add-on is now full in use. Now that we have spiced up our query add-on, there's a lot of other things you can do as well with green shifts. So watch this playlist next if you would like to see other things related to green shift. And if you like this kind of videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and press like to let me know that you like this video. And see you on the next one. Keep designing.